Hello there, my name is Vince from My Mate Vince. And in this video today, we're gonna to try to fix up this battery here. This is a Metabo battery. I bought this drill here years ago when I just started up my Mr. Telephone business after I left BT. It was expensive at the time, it was like 300 and something quid, but I know that when it comes to things like this, you need to buy expensive, buy cheap, buy twice. This thing has lasted the test of time. Now I know it looks a bit of a novelty thing, but it is actually a very good brand. I don't know if they exist now, but they were German, and uh, yeah, they're good, uh, good quality. So basically, this battery here is still working fine. You can see here, I've got four lights on it. And if I go to charge it, well, it's already full, but if I go to charge it here, it makes the right uh, things going on down here. You can see that it will do this here, and it's flashing here. And then when it goes 100%, it goes to solid here. So if I left this in for a few minutes, it would go to 100% because it's near enough, uh, near enough full. But this one here didn't show any signs of failing, but I don't use these drill stuck. <laughs> I don't use these drills much now because, uh, you know, it's only, I, last, I used it now because I was messing around with that Amiga watch, you know, the thing that I found buried in stone. Uh, but apart from that, it would only be if I'm putting up a picture, a shelf, or a little bit of work that I need to do every now and then. But look at this one here. It's already coming up with this here. Yeah? And it's not charging. And I had it left plugged in for hours upon hours. And every now and then, fan will kick in. So you think, well, you know, is it getting hot? But uh, yeah, there's, there's nothing happening. And I did measure volts on it. And it's something like 10 or 11 volts. And it should be 18 volts. So if you have a look here. Good thing is, this one's working. So we can measure it against this one. I'm not sure what, what pins do what. There you go, like 19.9 volts. Let's go on that one there. No, so maybe the middle one is some kind of charging. 18.8 to there. It might be to allow some sort of charging. But look here, see, see 11 volts. So I'm wondering, has one of the cells gone on the inside or could it be the board? I think one of the cells has failed. So let's take it apart and see what's going on. It'd be great if I could just maybe replace a cell and get it working again. Right, it looks like these are Torx bits in here, I think. Let's see if they're Torx 10. Right, okay, I'm gonna have to uh, just do it like this, because if I push it in any more than that. What you can do sometimes is you can fill up this with something, a bit of cardboard, and then it can't push in, because what will happen is, you see, it's not gonna reach, well, it is reaching now. Do you know what, I think it's just about reaching. But you know, if that was a little bit further up, you can fill this with cardboard, and then it just makes it stick out a little bit more. There you go, you can see I can't do it here. I'm just doing it at an angle so it doesn't push in. Right now, I'm hoping it's gonna be a load of those uh, 18650s in here. Look at that, looks nice quality. Okay, good bit of dust. Sawdust. Right, so we've got two wires here and then a sense one in the middle. That must be for temperature in the middle here. So now, one of these cells must have failed. So we're gonna go across each of them. Any markings on here? No. It says here, date 2006. So obviously, they, uh, it's getting on a bit now. Let's see if there's one cell measuring lower than the other. So 3.1, that's a good cell. 3.1, that's it, hold on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What if there's 10 of them? So obviously they're not in series then, are they? Hopefully it's gonna show up one bad cell. Ooh. Right, nothing happening on that one. Let's go on to the others. Or that one. 3.3, 3.3, let's try to pierce through the insulation, 
3.2. 2. 3.2, how weird is that we've got two cells together that are showing nothing? What's going on there? Weird. So it's these two. Don't you think that's a bit odd to have two fail on the same, uh, you know, next to each other? Hmm. Right, okay. Now obviously you shouldn't be messing with lithium cells because they are dangerous. So don't copy what you see in these videos. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take these, these two out of circuit. So now, uh, how easy... I'm going to have to take them all out, am I? There's two screws here. Let's undo the screws and see how flexible this is here. Right, so that's willing to separate there now. So there's going to be a board in here somewhere. I'm going to try to prise up these spot welds here. I don't think plastic is going to be strong enough to uh, prise them up. Excellent. I've got one up. See, what I'm thinking is if I could just replace two cells, then the battery pack might be still fine to use. Well, I've got to be careful because obviously if I short them out, they could explode. Good news is if these cells really are zero, then you see there's not going to be much energy there to explode. That's why I didn't want to use metal. There we go. Fantastic. Excellent. Now I hope I don't have to take out everything. I'm thinking how am I going to be able to take this apart because they're all welded here. And this board looks like it's covered in some kind of resin. Can you see it's all grey in there? So these contacts go in. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this unless I take them all out on one side. Unfortunately there is no way. You could break the plastic off the casing and then just take off the spot welds on the two batteries on one side and the two batteries on the other side and push them right the way through. But then the casing on the plastic's broken. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just taking off all the spot welds, two on one side and then the whole other side. That will allow me to lift up the side plastic thing and then the two faulty cells will just slide on out. It is a real shame that it's made so well that I'm going to have to break every single spot weld on this. But I have got a spot welder so I can pop them back on afterwards. The other option, like I mentioned, was to break the plastic. But the problem is, in even breaking the plastic, I'm going to have to use a metal tool. And that's on the positive side of these cells. Now, I know they're dead, but still, on the positive side of the cells, the little bottom bit is positive. But around it is all negative, And it's just basically insulated off with a thin little bit of plastic. So it wouldn't take much for my pliers or that to go through it. So I feel a bit uneasy about trying to break off the plastic. Hence the reason why I'm persevering with breaking off all the spot wells. While I'm doing that, we'll give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive. The members this month are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes and Max Rokotansky. Having Fun Repairs, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeebs.com, DJVG, Pixie, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Daniel Watson, Zeke C, Anthony Dean, Baza 2, Russ Mellinson, Ellis Garbutt, Gaspar Heller, Richard Berglund, Jacob Culpin, Matt Rawlins, and Soul Reaver 555. Broke the plastic. There we go. Excellent. Right, now, this should come out. Yes, it does. Results. Happy days. Oh, here's the uh, temperature probe. Just here. So, obviously, we're going to be leaving that. So, now, it was these two here. Pop that out. And that out. Okay, give them another measure. Okay. 
nothing at all. Amazing, tiny bit in that one. Now, what are they? Does it say anything? K26A, oh, here we go, there is something around it. Let's give it a clean up and see if we can get any markings from it. Right, when I look closely, I do find some markings on it, so I Google them to see what they are. Right, looking at my phone, nothing comes up if I type in KE7543 or K26A. But, if we have a look here, we know that the battery is 18 volts, 2.2 amps, so it's 18 volts. So each of these are gonna be listed as 3.7. And we have 10 of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, yeah? So if they were all in series, it would be 10 times 3.7, it'd be 37 volts, yeah? But it isn't 37 volts, is it? It's 18 volts, so look, there must be five in series. One, two, three, four, five. Five times 3.7 is going to be 18.5. We know that there's five of them in series, but there's 10 of them, isn't there? So it must be five in series, and then each of them is paralleled. And it is, because if you have a look, they're paralleled. So basically, these two are parallel, these two are parallel, these two are parallel, these two are parallel, and these two are parallel. So imagine you can get rid of all of these and it's still going to work because we've got one, two, three, four, five in series. But instead of being 2.2 amp hours, it's only going to be 1.1 amp hours. So the very fact that we have two of them in series with each other, to, in parallel with each other, says to me that each one of these must be 3.7 volts, 1.1 amp hours. Because look, if we had negative, positive, negative and positive, these are gonna be in parallel with each other, yeah? So if we were coming up here, we would have 3.7 volts, and if they were 1.1 amp hours each, it would equal 2.2 amp hours. But if they were wired up like this, positive, negative, negative, positive, then we would have uh, six, 7.4 volts 1.1 amp hours so that says to me that each of these because there's only 2.2 amp hours must only be 1.1 amp hours which is uh, which is pretty low now i've got a feeling all my cells are going to be much higher than that because i bought them recently and this is obviously technology from quite a long time ago now looking at my cells here i've got quite a few of them the lowest ones i've got because things have moved on so much are 2,500 milliamp hours. So if you have a look here, you'll see that uh, Samsung, 2,500 milliamp hours, just here. So now, if it was just gonna be in something like a decked phone, and you were using AA or AAA batteries, then it wouldn't, I don't think it makes much difference. You put in a higher milliamp hours and all that's gonna happen is it's gonna take longer in between charges. You know, it'd be better, the phone will last for longer. My worry here is the fact that you're putting two cells in that do have the same voltage. You know, I'll make sure when they go in, it's 3.7 volts. But these can take longer to charge because they can accept a charge for longer. Will the battery management system be clever enough to stop the charger when these reach full? I presume they will. Also, I read that the higher the capacity, they might not be able to release their energy as quick. So they might be slower to discharge. And in the drill, you probably want them to discharge quite quick because you need quite a bit of power on there. So I just don't know. Ideally, I want 3.7 volt 16, 18650s that are 1.1 amp hours or 1100 milliamp hours. I'm not too sure about this, you know, because even then I don't know if it's going to have the same. I suppose the only answer is, is to replace all 10 of them. But, but then if I replace all 10, I'm going to bring this battery then up to, it's going to be a five amp hour battery. Is this going to be able to cope with five amp hours? Do you know what I mean? Or is that going to cause problems there? This seems all so complicated. Output 4.8 volts to 24 volts, 5 amps DC. Hmm. Well, 
I haven't got 10 batteries anyway of the same type, so no matter what I do, I'm going to be swapping cells. So there's four greens. Let me count how many greens I've got. I don't really want to waste all my greens on here, you know what I mean? Because I need these for other projects. Yeah, so I've only got five greens anyway. So you're reading online, it suggests that uh, it's okay to use. It says a high capacity cell will not damage the equipment. It does not force current through the equipment. Because remember, the drill can only draw what the drill needs to draw. My worry is the charging off it up. That's my worry. Will the battery management system in here be able to cope with that? Well, you know what? It's going to be a problem for many people, isn't it? Let me just see if you can still buy 1.1 amp hour batteries. Problem is though, it doesn't really solve the problem. Those are people going to have this problem in the future where they've got higher cells. So they'd like to know whether you can get a higher cell in here. So if I release a video with two higher cells in here, the comments section will then be alive with comments of whether you can use it or not. So people will learn more rather than if I just buy the correct battery to put in there. You know that logic makes complete sense in my head. If we get the correct batteries for it, we then know we can fix a drill battery by getting the correct batteries, which we kind of already knew. If I put the incorrect batteries in, same voltage, but different amps, then you see, we not only know that you can hopefully fix a drill battery by putting different batteries in, but also there's gonna be a discussion then in the comment section about why you can or can't do that. And I think we'll all learn a lot more because a lot of you are gonna know the answer, but there's gonna be a lot of you that don't know the answer. And I think it would be uh, really useful to know. So what I'm doing now is I'm getting the spot welder set up and we're gonna spot weld these two new cells back in. And obviously I have to spot weld all the other bits of nickel as well back onto the existing cells. Right, so that's that. On boost, turn it on. Come on now. Not sure if I'm getting all the way through here or not. One thing I'm doing different here than before is last time I always kept one lead in the same place, but a lot of people correctly suggested that that will put too much heat into that one spot and you could blow through. You need to move both probes. Every time you do it, you need to move to a new location. Otherwise, you're just gonna keep putting the weld into the same spot over and over again. You know what, it's not going through. Can I make it more powerful? No, that's as powerful as it was go. I think this is because it's thicker. It's thicker than what I normally use this with. Let me go on to a bit that hasn't been welded. No. Oh no, what am I gonna do? I might have to solder it. Yeah, what it is, is these are a lot thicker than, for example, when I did the little battery pack. You know, the power bank. These are much thicker. No, it's not making its way through at all. Oh, what a real shame, because I've had such good luck with this thing here. Right, there's no point in doing the other side. Oh, that's a lot that I've got to solder on. See, it's dangerous to solder. What a shame. Right, I've made the decision not to film the soldering off this uh, battery pack here because it's too dangerous. and I don't want somebody to copy it and then for it to blow up in their face. Basically, I have done it in the past, but the nickel plates were a lot thinner. And all I'd had to do is put a little bit of solder on the nickel plate, a little bit of solder on the cell, only have it on there for a couple of seconds, the soldering iron. And then you see, bring the, the nickel plate down with the soldering iron, heat it up for a few seconds and then force it down with the pliers and it would stick nicely. The reason you don't use soldering irons on the lithium cells is because of the heat generated. With the spot welder, it's very localized. You're only heating up a little bit, hence the reason it's done like that from the factory. With a soldering iron, you're having to heat up quite a big area to get the heat into the metal for the solder to melt. In this instance here, because this Metabo battery is like the Rolls-Royce of drill batteries, 
the nickel plate is super thick, so I'm having to hold the soldering iron for an amount of time that I do not feel comfortable with whatsoever. And even then, the solder's not melting properly. So if I was to drop this battery a couple of times, I know full well these nickel plates would just spring back out. So 100% I have to spot weld them. Not for this video, but I will need to get a spot welder. If you guys know of a good spot welder, well, it doesn't have to be like a really, really great professional one, but a hobbyist one that will penetrate a nice thickness of metal, then please let me know what the brand is and model number in the description down below. Don't send any links because they won't go through. Because the good thing about buying something cheap is that you've dipped your toes in the water. And now I know, even though I didn't buy this, this was given to me by Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, I now know that I'm definitely going to use a spot welder going forward. So I'm happy to buy one for me maybe 150-ish pounds because I know full well it's going to get used going into the future. So the next time you see this, it will be back together, soldered back together, but please, it's just a temporary fix until I can get myself a proper spot welder. And then what I'll do is I'll include it in maybe the next revisit video, just going across the cells. So at least that way then, as long as the comment section suggests that the cells that I've put in are safe to use, at least it will be probably as good as factory because if I get a good spot welder why wouldn't it be as good as factory right they're all soldered back on and they look an absolute mess I'll be honest I'm really embarrassed by that is it even gonna fit now and it's like struggling to go in there but that's not a bad thing because that will put pressure on them you know I was gonna pack it with cardboard, but I don't think I need to. That's gonna put pressure on them at the side because it's so tightly uh, tightly packed. Right, okay. Let's see now what it's gonna do. Let's see if it's still gonna do that flash and whether it will start charging. And we'll have to stop it maybe every five or 10 minutes to see, is it starting to balance up? Here it goes, let's see what's gonna happen. Fantastic. Didn't do that before. Okay, I'm gonna monitor it. In fact, could we take the bottom off and monitor it that way? Hold on, can I just take this? Oh, hang on a second, I don't wanna blow it up. Could we keep the top in? We should be able to, shouldn't we? Like that. Now you see, I can uh, I can measure them. So let's see if this is climbing. Right, so that's climbing. So that's not a good sign. Is this climbing? Yeah, that's climbing, 3.6. I wonder how intelligent the charger is, because they're not balanced at the moment anyway. It's climbing very quick. Be interesting to see if it cuts out when it gets to, uh, you know, like 4.2 here. Right, it's only been about 10 minutes later, but look, they're all starting to catch up with the green now, so. Check this out, over four volts, over four, F yeah, over four, nearly 4.10. Why is that dropping? Why did that drop so suddenly? Ah, look at this. It's gone to 100%. Ah, so it hasn't, uh, yeah, so look, it's stopped now because this has got to 4.1. Right, okay. Let's take that out. Let's see how many lights we got. So we've got four lights here, but it's not really four lights, is it? I bet if we measure the voltage, it's going to be under 18. Eighteen point five. Not the same as this one. Maybe I didn't fully charge this one. 18.6, you know what, maybe this has a weak set in it as well. 
So it shows you, just like the suitcase battery, it, it probably does balance it if they're very close. But if they're not close, then how long would it take to balance them? Do you see what I mean? Would it take like 10, 20 charges before they're balanced? Not sure. Right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this up here and I'm gonna power a power bank just from this pair here. Right, so I've got my little 18650 single cell USB charger here that Marcel sent over years ago. And I've just plugged my USB meter into it with, so I can monitor that it is actually charging and I'll plug my power bank in. So these two wires are going to the negative and the positive of the pair of the new green cells and it's charging up here now. So basically what I'm doing is I'm draining these cells to charge up my power bank. And when the green cells get to be 3.8 like all of the others, I will unplug this and then I will uh, take over the charging with this here. And hopefully they will charge balance. So if we quickly go across here now, we should see it discharging. So that should go to 56. 4.155, so you can see it's going down. So I say at that rate now, maybe in about uh, half an hour or so, I might be down to the correct uh, correct amount. It's got to lose about 400, doesn't it? And I did about three or four just then. This is taking forever. Oh, it's slowly working its way down. It's because there's two cells in parallel and they're quite powerful. So, you know what, it's already been two hours. I'm gonna have about another hour and a bit, I'd say, to get that down. I tried putting a big power bank in, a bigger one, but it still only drew at the same amount there, so it must be limited by this here, you see. This must be only outputting what it can, uh, what it can allow. Anyway, look at this. I know you can't measure batteries on resistance, but this is quite interesting. To begin with, these two cells, I was wondering why did two go 40, and it got me thinking. It didn't, did it? One went faulty and it must have drained the other one down to a below a safe voltage. Because if we go here, this top one's reading nothing. So I presume that's the faulty one. And this one here is reading something, yeah? Now, if we go to resistance, check this out. If I go here, can you see? That's nearly a full short because my leads at the moment are, well, there you go, it is a full short because my leads are 1.4 and here, is 1.4, so it's a full short that way. Turn it around the other way, and it's also a full short. Yeah, not quite, but nearly. So uh, yeah, I know this has got voltage in, so this is gonna give a, re a weird reading, like a zero, yeah, a load of zeros. But then when we go this way, you can see it's a completely different reading. So I think, can you see there, it's in the megohms. So, well, half a megohm. I think that that shorted internally and it drained this one down because that's the one that it's in parallel with. So yeah, I think this whole battery pack failed just for one cell. Interesting. So if I had got to it early enough, then uh, I suppose this one here would have been salvageable, but it, it isn't because this has drained this right the way down because it was shorted. Right, I've stopped my charging. It was 3.88 when I stopped, but uh, for some reason it seems to have grown. But surely it's going to be able to balance it from here. It's only like 0 0.02 of a difference max between the highest and the lowest. So I think it'd be fine. And also I charged up this other battery fully. And this is what this one is. 19, I think it was. Yeah, there you go, 19.3. Right now, let's see what's going to happen. I think now it will uh, it will charge. All right, flash in and going through there. Perfect. Right, so I'm just going to monitor it and see what it does. Right, so it charges itself up very quick. We're at a hundred percent now, and if we go here. The lights have also stopped flashing, these ones. And if you check them out, 4 4.18, 4.16, 4.16, 4.16. So this one is a little higher. Strange that, and now it's 4.17. And uh, this one here is 
so we're 0.1 of a volt less. Don't know. I think the main thing is the drill is going to work, so I, I don't think it's going to be a problem. And also, nothing feels warm, so I don't think there's going to be a problem with charging. I'm not sure whether or not there's going to be a problem with the uh, discharging, you know, when you're actually using it. I wonder will it lack a bit of oomph. Again, I don't think so because there's only two cells out of the 10. So what's interesting there is when we first all started charging, the new cells were the highest. But coming out of that now, they're the lowest. And I suppose that makes sense because if something can only go up to 4.2 volts, then if there's not much capacity, it's going to fill up quite quick to that 4.2 volts. But if there's loads of capacity, it's going to take quite a while to get to that 4.2 volts. So these other cells are probably all 100% charged and measuring their 4.2. But this one that I've got might only be like 60% charged or 70% charged or 80% charged. I don't know. What I'm thinking about now is that when they go to drain down, surely this cell will also drain slower as well. So when all the others are fully empty, this one will still have a bit of juice in. So does that mean then when you go to charge it up next time, it's going to be even more imbalanced? So many questions that need to go in the comment section. If you know the answer to that, again, pop it down in the comment section for me. Okay, so this is the one now that was flat originally. And this is the original one. Let's check for voltage on both of them. Nineteen point three three. Nineteen point four three. Fantastic. So this has actually gone a little bit higher than this one here. Now, let's see if it sounds nice and powerful. Now, obviously, it does need proper welding, spot welding. So I need to buy one of them. That to me sounds as powerful as it has always been. So fantastic. So obviously don't copy what you see in this video. What you need to do is you need to get a good spot welder to do that. Questions are, what spot welder can I buy? Because I want to get myself one that can go through nickel plate that thick. That was pretty beefy, that nickel plate. And also, is that okay with that higher amp battery in there? But the bottom line is, beforehand I only had one battery because this was faulty and now I think it's working and in the charging time I didn't see any abnormal voltages and I felt no heat. So personally I would be happy to use this but you're going to have to check down in the comment section to actually see whether or not it's safe to do because I actually do not know. Good news is though I've had this now for about 16 years and I think hopefully I'm going to get another few years out of it now until the other cells start failing. If you enjoyed the video give it a massive thumbs up and I will see See you all very soon. Thank you so much for watching.